The news at noon is brought to you by Owensboro Health. Get care from Owensboro Health's pulmonology and sleep medicine team locations in Owensboro and Madisonville. Visit owensborohealth.org today. Your tri-state weather today, sunny skies and slightly warmer with a high of 79. Clear skies and not as cool tonight, low of 55. Fog early on Friday, then sunny skies and warmer with a high of 83. Ticket sales for the nation's largest half pot are officially underway at the old Mead Johnson parking lot on St. Joe and the Lloyd. You can drive up and make your purchases until 8 o'clock tonight. That means festival goers can begin their half pot experiences early in advance of Monday's opening of the 103rd Westside Nut Club Fall Festival. New panels are installed on the half pot booths which not only show totals, but also the locations of first aid stations and restrooms, emergency alerts, event schedules, and more. You can see the Ferris wheel from afar now as the rides are going up for the Fall Festival Midway. Some of the kiddie rides are already in place and the restroom trailers are ready. The festival opens with Family Day on Sunday. The official festival opening is lunchtime on Monday. With a fatality count approaching 200, Hurricane Helene has gone into the record books as the deadliest storm to hit the U.S. mainland since Katrina in 2005. Jim Ryan says life in western North Carolina won't be back to normal for quite some time. In hard-hit Buncombe County, North Carolina, nearly two-thirds of the homes and businesses are still without power. As for water and sewer... We have experienced catastrophic damage to our production systems. Clay Chandler is with the city of Asheville. Water is being trucked in in tanker trucks and... Water bottles are being ferried in by helicopter. Newburgh's Maranatha Baptist Church has been a beehive of activity of late. The congregation has been gathering supplies for those impacted by Hurricane Helene a week ago today. A church member owns a transportation company and wanted to fill one of his buses with donated items. The church got involved and posted the info on Facebook. It came together quickly from there. Response is continuing as strong as ever, and they're bringing in a trailer to handle the overflow of donations. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, or the ATF, specializes in understanding how fires start. Now, over a year after that wildfire on Maui that killed over 100 people, the ATF has issued a report on the origin of that fire. ABC's Alex Stone covered that wildfire on Maui and has this report. For over a year, there have been many rumors on Maui about how the deadly wildfires started and theories about multiple fires, but the ATF says scientific evidence shows there was one fire from a downed power pole that started at around 6.30 in the morning on August 8th of last year. Firefighters spent eight hours thinking they had put it out, but later that afternoon, the fire rekindled, reignited by severe wind. The ATF is officially classifying the wildfire as accidental, saying firefighters battled hurricane force wind. Police gear stolen from an officer's car lands a man in jail. On September 13th, an officer reported a gun, a taser, a handheld radio, and a vest were taken from a car. 20-year-old Tridavion Rebstock was taken in for questioning on Wednesday. He admitted to the thefts and was lodged in the Vandenberg County Jail. It took a jury less than two hours to reach a guilty verdict for David Schonebaum. He was sentenced to 16 years in prison. Schonebaum is charged with child neglect after his six-month-old son was found with over 50 rat bites on his body. The child is permanently disfigured. Angel Schonebaum pled guilty to a lesser neglect charge and two counts of neglect of a dependent. She'll be sentenced on October 24th. Delania Thurman, the baby's aunt, took a plea deal and was sentenced to two years of probation. Causing some problems about 80 years later, an unexploded World War II bomb that blew up on an Air Force runway. 
ABC's Chuck Severson. It was a 500-pound bomb dropped by the U.S. and WW2 embedded in the ground that suddenly blew up Wednesday at Miyazaki Airport in southwestern Japan. A video recorded by a nearby aviation school showed the blast spewing pieces of asphalt into the air like a fountain. It left a large crater in a taxiway. It forced the cancellation of more than 80 flights, but no injuries, say Japanese officials. No aircraft were nearby. Chuck Severson, ABC News. The Vandenberg County Council chooses to bring in an outside actuary to go over the numbers and the plans put in place by the Sheriff's Office. It all started when the state made note that contributions to the Sheriff's Office pension plan had been far too low for several years. County officials visited Indianapolis last month to show that they were coming up with answers to assure the solvency of the plan. Sheriff Noah Robinson says the present commitments can be met. Today is day four of a trial for a Warwick County mother accused of murder and neglect of her three-month-old child in 2022. Kaylin Monroe admitted skipping feeding the child and would forget about the baby if he was quiet. Court records show the trial will continue with the state presenting its case. Wednesday, the judge denied a defense motion to strike testimony of two witnesses. The trial is expected to last several more days. The CIA is offering advice to people in North Korea, Iran, and China who want to share information with intelligence officials without getting caught. Chuck Severson. The CIA this week has posted tips in Mandarin, Farsi, and Korean on several leading Internet platforms giving advice to potential informants. The tips include using a private browser and virtual private network to evade government surveillance and Internet restrictions. The CIA posted similar instructions in Russian two years ago, and the success of that program prompted U.S. intelligence officials to expand the effort. Wesselman Woods will close for a construction project beginning Monday. A social media post from the facility says an in-progress accessibility project will close the woods from October 7th through 14th. The construction will consist of work to the trails and trail doors and the path to the Wellborn Baptist Foundation Nature Playscape. It'll include pouring concrete and adding more boardwalks. You're listening to the News at Noon on 104 FM WIKY.